We've got a feeling that the water in here is just what is left in the pipes. If not, we can just keep using this for now, purely for, for cleaning purposes. I'm not drinking from this. So yeah, let's, let's try it. It's empty. It was just what was left in the pipes. Oh, a little bit, but it's better than nothing. As you can probably tell, one of the reasons that we got this property cheap was because of this, this is sorting. Now the reason the plasterboards are down is because it's not been lived in since last April. We know from the estate agents it had a flood over Christmas, which I'm guessing it was a frozen pipe, a bust pipe. We've got plasterboard missing here, plasterboard missing just behind the back. Now that didn't put me off because you've probably seen me and my dad and my husband put plasterboard up and we thought, yeah, we can do that. And uh, I know how to do some basic plumbing, but we have found that the, the tank is definitely still there. It took us a couple of days to find the stopcock, but that's because we were dipping in and out of the property. And we found it in the ensuite, which is far at the other end. We've tested it very quickly. It does work, but we didn't leave it on long enough to explore any leaks. And the reason for that is because I think I found it and I'll show you. Now, as you can see here with these copper pipes, the lagging is already missing. And there's quite a bit of crusty looking matter here. Uh, the other thing is, it isn't stable. If I go like that, I can feel movement inside. So it's a solder joint. And after testing to see if the water worked, I could feel a little bit of dampness. So I think that could have even popped off and just gone everywhere. I'm convinced it's this. Now I'm probably going to get some hate for this, but I'm not bothered. I'm going to be replacing that join with some speed fit, some push fit, some plastic plumbing, because it's easy to do and I've never soldered plumbing joints before and I've got all the bits here. I'll show you how I set this up and then put the water back on, test it and hopefully, cross my fingers, there's no more leaks anywhere. The other thing that I need to bear in mind is I don't want to disturb the rest of the plumbing so I've got to be careful because if I start tugging away at stuff I could create another weakness at another join and uh, yeah, it could just be one job turning into three, four or five. Let's say that is the copper pipe. It goes almost to the halfway point. So I'd need about that much, which looks just over an inch. I don't think I've got enough to play with by the time I cut that off either end. So that's why I've got a little piece of the 15 mil pipe. So what I need to do to make sure it's gonna be leak proof is to put an insert either end. So, oh, that came off. And another one. There. Make sure these are unscrewed and push that right in. And then I can tighten that one up. Right. Then another straight coupler on there. It's 15 mil to 15 mil. So push as far as you can go and I'm gonna screw that tight. Done. So that is fixed. So this is just in case, but we're gonna try and dismantle this first and I'm gonna need a bucket. I've got a bucket at the ready. Okay, speed fit is there, pipe cutter there. Oh, 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 it is coming out, it's coming out. I've, I've disconnected it, it was definitely this. Ah! Right, I'm cutting this off. Because you can't see properly, I'm gonna show you how to use it. You should find an arrow on the side and that's the way you should be turning it to cut it. And sometimes they come with this black cover piece to wrap around the pipe and lock it into place. So slot it over, press it to click, and then keep twisting until it gets looser and looser and falls off. There you go. And sometimes you may need to deburr it. Ah, got it. Sure, that's worked. It worked. It has worked. Right. Okay. That's off. Oh, we've got another problem over there because this is pulled out. I don't know if I've disturbed it or it was already like that, and it was maybe bound to happen. So, instead of uh, going over there and seeing where I need to join, right now because I'm under here. I'm just gonna use some wire wool to clean it up 
for when I am ready to connect that. It's just one of those awkward jobs. I'm gonna see how I get on and shout to my husband, can you pass me stuff while I'm up here? Cause I don't wanna keep coming up and down the ladders. Yeah, this joint seems to be perfectly okay that we're aware of at the moment. Oh, it's achy work up here. Um, and that can move. I think we can do this. I'm gonna disconnect this and push it in. I've got the dirtiest stuff on ever. Now there'll come a time when you need to dis disconnect them. So, you just unscrew this piece here. You unscrew that. And then, see this flappy bit here, the collar if you like. You need to make sure that is pulled in. So I'm pulling it in that way and then I go like that. And sometimes you'll have the inserts stay in there which is a bit irritating because I don't like the idea of trying to damage them. So what I do is hold that in again and I use some pliers. This is what stops it from leaking. And these can be a bit of a pain to get out there. And I make sure there's no damage. So what I'm gonna do is now connect this to that and make sure it's unscrewed. But to connect these to copper, I don't need the inserts because they won't cave in when I screw them on. So once I know that one's secure, I'm gonna go on to the other side to find out what's happening. So I'm gonna push that on as far as it goes. Yeah, good stuff and tighten it. And that isn't coming off. Do the same with the leaky pants over here. Leaky pants. That is in. I'll show you a better angle. Now I've pushed them in, that one's tight. There's a gap there, so I need to screw that in. Right, don't think that's gonna be any tighter, so I'm gonna go like that. Right, I've got my plumbing bag. Now I'm climbing up into the attic to see what I'm dealing with on the other side of the pipe. It has, ah, okay, okay. It has come out. I definitely don't have this part. It's a three-way. How do you use those? So it's a few hours later now because I had to go back to tool station to buy some more speed fit fittings. And uh, after speaking to my dad, just to give him an update because he keeps asking, have you got your water on yet? Well, no. He suggested that if pipes freeze, it could affect all of the other joins. So I need to uh, have a look do some chopping and reconnecting. There is an old HBP 2.0 T connector up there that I can't unscrew one end and I can the other. And I've read online that people suggested hacksaws, not to me, but the, apparently they're an absolute nightmare. So that's why I've just decided to just go with speed fit. I know speed fit. The other thing is there's a white pipe up there, another plastic pipe, and I don't know whether that is speed fit or the new HEP 2.0 or whatever you call them. That leads to an isolation compressor valve and I may have to just use speed fit for that white pipe. We'll see how I get on. Okay, that's coming off. Right. I've got a clean end. It looks like a speed fit actually, because it's got that blue ring. No, that's not happening. We've also found potentially an easier solution. There is, this pipe goes all the way over there to an elbow copper piece, a connector. And if I disconnect that, I've got a speed fit elbow that I can put on straight over the copper underneath and then replace the HEP 2.0 pipe for the speed fit so I know it will work with what I'm about to do. I found when you buy them from the shop, the very first edge is very rough. Hands would be happy with rough. The insert is going in, there, now it's in. Now that's in, it's tightened, I'm gonna go back to the other end and connect it to the, the future T-connector that I need to replace. So I'm at the other end of the speed fit pipe. I want to attach it to this on that end and then replace that with this there. But I've got to cut this pipe here, then put all of that together and that should be it, and we can do some tests. I could do with a lovely hot bath. Done. Screw that tight. Because there was a tap here, my husband wants me to put one back, so I'm gonna cut about there. Or do you want it there? We'll go, we'll go there. There. Ah, oh, come on. Little devil. It's on. Right. right, that's on. I've got another piece. I'm going to put that in there. 
with the insert in. That is in. Now I need to put that into there. Insert. Come on, you bugger. There you go. Sometimes they are tight. Yeah, tighten that. Hello. So, because uh, I want to return all the way back here, I'm going to take the original copper out that I did connect to the coupler and I'm going to thread some speed fit pipe through this lagging and then come back to that and then I know what I can cut, cut it down to. I'm hoping this pipe doesn't get stuck in the lagging. By the time I got to this point, the copper was no longer the right length for the job and the speed fit is more flexible to bend while slotting it in. Oh, grab that. I've hit something. Can you see just here? So the pipe, it's, it's, it got saggy. So I'm going to put an insert in that. Yeah, that's in. And tighten time. Let's put the lag in back there. I just need to go back to there, trim it down, insert. And if that's all we need to do on this house, then we're laughing. I'm hoping we don't have any more. Sorry. So we're back to where I started. Insert. Bit of an awkward angle that. There. Pipe bend. Pushing it in. Right, it's connected. Open, that's all it is. Okay, so we can hear running water, which is great. But, bad news, we've got a flood in the, the bathroom. I think it's coming from the bath. Down at the bottom here, I believe it's leaking, but the tiles are covering the screw panels, which is not great. So I need to try and get this off. Now we've also had to set up some lights in here ourselves because maybe the fuse has gone for one ring main because this light doesn't work and nor do, do the showers just here. We are replacing this eventually. Right. So it's definitely satched over there. It seems to be more over there. But it's wet over there as well. We're absolutely nuts because you know what? It's quarter to midnight. <laughs> so I'm going to turn this on and just see if I can get an idea of any, see any live dripping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah! Get the camera in there now. There's a crack in the overflow hose and it's not even connected anymore at all. So I've just unscrewed the bath drain. You can see that there. So then I could remove this bit here because it's this bit leaking here. In fact, there's a massive, oh, I bet it's nice. It's, a, it's the size of my thumb. Since I think the overflow hole was caused by a mouse gnawing through, this is what I'm gonna try just in case because it's exposed now and I wanna to go to bed. And then tomorrow I can actually Get yeah, by a piece and replace it. Maybe not the bath panel though. Okay, so uh, I found my first serious leak and we need to do something about it. There's a wet patch just there and uh, yeah, visible drip. Let's turn the water off. Water is coming off. This isn't how I want to start my morning. I've just exposed the joint and it's this one here. That one doesn't look that good either, but that doesn't seem to be leaking. It's definitely this. So this is very wet and it's, um, it's got to crud all over either side. I'm just going to cut closer to the joint first and then potentially just go a bit wider and I might need um, a longer piece. We'll see how we get on because I don't think there's any flexibility in this to get um, a straight piece in there. No, that's, there's no giving that at all, so I can't just slot that in. So I'm going to use one that's a little bit more flexible, but this probably is too much. I'll go half, but I definitely think I need to go out and buy some more. I'm running out of inserts. But... Right. 
<laughs> it's in a very awkward place for me to deal with. But we'll go with it. I don't want to disturb on a plumber. So it's about there. aching oh I just had my husband stabilize the um, that joint there just so I could bend it in slightly and it's in it feels it good to me and now I need to tighten that up so we definitely need to go and get some inserts anyway just in case we have any other issues and some more pipes and we've noticed that the bath plug the the drain in the bath has got some gnaw marks on there so we've got to order a piece for that as well and hopefully we can stop all of the leaks so the mouse trap is empty i'm kind of relieved i don't know how i'd cope with them if i found them let's get that out of the way i'll have to try it in different rooms but i've been to tool station to get a McAlpine one and a half inch combined bath waste this was about six pound fifty i think and i won't need all the bits from there i don't plan on keeping this bath i just want to be able to use it the thing I'm really only bothered about are these three pieces. I may as well just replace them as they are. I think I will use this though, it's nice and shiny. First thing I'm going to do is just clear this because it's cruddy and I'm going to spray it with a degreaser and give it a scrub. Then I wipe it dry before grabbing a handful of plumber's putty by rolling it into a sausage in the palm of my hands. I can make it more pliable to shape around the bottom of the plug hole cover. Then place it back, but before screwing it in place, I added a bead of silicon around the drain's overflow spout and pushed it on. Although that was easier said than done. But once I won the battle, I wiped the excess off. And for the rubber seal, for insurance, I added another bead of Plumber's Mate. And started putting everything back together. Screwed the white bath trap back on until it was hand tight. What's up, hands? And while keeping it steady with one hand, screw the plug hole back with a screwdriver and remove the excess putty with an old McDonald's plastic knife. I knew it'd come in handy. One last thing though, I siliconed and pushed the overflow pipe back on so it never came off again. Dry as a bone. Well, I finally got my bath in the end and many, many more because it was weeks ago since we fixed all of the leaks and of course that means that we got the boiler up and running shortly after we fixed a thermostat so I think the pipes have had sufficient time for any tests for any other leaks to emerge and everything seems dry as a bone touch wood but no doubt we'll probably change a lot of things anyway when we come to remodeling the house especially after a lot of your suggestions and when it comes to looking into a ground source or air source heat pump or whatever we decide to go with but before we do any of that, we don't want history to repeat itself. So we need to go up there and relag any of the exposed pipes. And at that point, we can put the plasterboard back on the ceiling, replace any missing insulation, and start increasing the rest of it up to a 270 millimeter level because that's what we need to do to increase our EPC rating in order to be eligible for any government grant for any air source heat pump or ground source heat pump. So I'm gonna do my favorite job, go back up there, start crawling around. So I'm up here prepared, I've got my foam lagging and a mitre box and a handsaw. And I think the only one that we need to do now is the speed fit pipe that goes all the way across and then try and cover. I might have to do a mitre join at the other end. Now these come with a partial split, but I need to separate it with my finger or thumb. Oh, it burns doing that. So it should just slot on, but I do have a T piece. So I'm going to cut a little cut there. All right. I've never done this before, but this V apparently when it goes over the top, you get a good coverage and then you can have another piece going around it to be snug up to it. And I want to cut about there. So I'm going to put that over that. I'm going to put some cable ties around that as well to keep it secure. But not too tight where it cuts into it. There. I can lean on here now. Oh, I'll split that. Right. 
I've only got a little bit left to do and this is an elbow join so this one's going to be a mitered join and another piece just further down to fully cover it. Right, I've got two 45 degree angles meeting. I'm going to wrap this up with a cable tie first. I'm just going to position it and I know where to cut down. So now that's done, we really need to start thinking about easier access up there because it was an absolute pain in the backside. We need to think about a loft ladder installation. We need to think about boarding a walkway so we can get to these pipes easier and better lighting. It's been quite challenging and it should be easier and one wrong foot could have been a disaster, meaning I'll create more videos than I have to. But if those kind of projects are right up your street and you need to do the same then don't forget to subscribe and hopefully I'll catch you in my next videos. Bye for now!